Happy Halloween and Blessed Samhain. This week begins with All Hallows Eve, occurring on Monday, October 31st, and beginning at 6 o'clock p.m. when the veil between the spiritual realm and the physical world becomes more gossamer than at any other night of the year. In many cultures, when the veil is at its most thin, loved ones that have crossed over to the other side are summoned or celebrated, like a, at a dinner or some kind of celebration. People also dress up in costumes that either express their shadow side or invoke vocations to which they aspire. Tuesday, November 1st, is All Saints Day and Wednesday, November 2nd, brings us All Souls Day. Day of the Dead lasts from November 1st to November 2nd. We travel this week from the constellation of Aquarius to Water Bear to the belly of Pisces the fish and culminate our voyage at the horns of Aries in the beginning of the constellation of the ram. And now here are your weekly mansions of the moon signs horoscope from October 31st to November 6th of 2022. Mansions of the moon signs, we have a waxing crescent moon on October 31st. We have a waxing half moon, a first quarter moon, same thing, waxing half moon, also called first quarter moon, in Aquarius at 6.36 a.m. November 1st. And we have a waxing gibbous moon November 2nd to the 6th. And this is all 2022 transiting through Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, and Aries. And we're using tropical astrology, universal time coordinated. Use projective imaginings, pictures, films, advertising, or magic during a waxing crescent half and gibbous moon. Porphyry rises, Medusa's head, showing secrets of witchcraft. Come the day of the dead, come the day of the dead, come the day of the dead. Here now are your daily mansions of the moon. This is your, your daily lunar mansion astrology, angels and lords. It's your guidance, okay, for the week of October 31st, Halloween, all the way to November 6th. Begin with October 31st, or All Hallows Eve, Samhain. We have a Capricorn waxing crescent moon to Aquarius moon in Lunar Mansion number 24 at 0829 hours, when Luna is voyaging from the tail of Capricorn to the shoulder of Aquarius. Married couples and military personnel will have good fortune and privilege, while the execution of governments and their policies will be blocked from moving forward. Use the picture or figure of a human mother breastfeeding her baby, for this causes the swelling, the growth, and the fruitfulness of flocks, herds, groups, and organizations. Ask the Lord of this mansion to increase your flock while using this image of the woman suckling her infant, and he will help you. Ancients used to cut off one of the horns of a male sheep that had, that had been neutered and after washing it, use this horn to create an icon of a woman suckling her baby in her arms. Now, in reality, this is where the story of using an emasculated man, such as Jesus the Nazarene, who was without wife or infant, could be worn around the neck of groups of his followers. And this image will swell and multiply the church's flock. From the Star of Fortune, in the constellation of Capricorn the goat, from the tail of the goat to the shoulder of Aquarius, with lunar angel Abrinael and Lord Abrin. Now there's an example of this used in the media, and a wonderful example of this is the TV series Dexter. And it's season four, episode seven in 2009. And on this episode, it's called Slack Tide, okay? And it's, it's again, season four, episode seven, and it's named Slack Tide. It's a Dexter TV show. The episode is Slack Tide, and it's a 2009 episode. And Dexter is a mystery crime drama television series directed by Tim Hunter. Writers James Manos Jr. adapted for TV series based upon the novel Darkly Dreaming Dexter by Jeff Lindsay, with Scott Buck listed also as a writer of the show. Slack Tide uses Lunar Mansion number 24 in 
opening and early scenes where character Dexter, a blood spatter lab tech expert for Miami Metro, and also a secret serial killer that cleans the city of murderers that harm innocent people, portrayed by actor Michael C. Hall. This is a rendering now for this mansion. I'm going to explain to you how this TV show in this particular episode, how in Slack Tide in the opening and early scenes, this image of the mother breastfeeding her child and also the using the one horn of the neutered animal is in the opening scene and several, in just a few minutes after that, okay? Now here's how it works, okay? All right, now. So we have Dexter, okay? Again, he's a blood spatter lab tech expert for Miami Metro, the police department, okay? But he's also a clandestine serial killer. But he's, he's like an anti-hero because he, he gets rid of people that he thinks are hurting innocent men, women, or children, okay? And he gets rid of them. And again, it's portrayed by actor Michael C. Hall. And what he's doing in this opening scene is he's helping to investigate a murder where a woman's severed arm is found inside of an alligator's stomach. This is a rendering of the single severed horn of a sheep that had been neutered as previously stated for this mansion's traditional image. This horn is used to create an icon of a woman breastfeeding her infant while holding in her arms in the customary representation of Mansion of the Moon number 24. So remember it's about breastfeeding. And they use the horn for the rendering. Now here's how they did it in this Dexter episode Slack Tide, okay? Now, soon after the opening scene where the arm of a woman is found inside the alligator, there follows a scene where Dexter is holding his infant son in his arm, okay? He's holding the infant son and he's holding the, the infant son lovingly in his arms. His infant son's baby's name is Harrison, okay? And he's seen holding in his arms his baby. Okay? And now, to make this a representation, an emblem of mansion number 24, okay, what they do is the directors or the writers or whoever set this up had uh, a baby bottle of formula, okay, nestled where Dexter is holding his infant son very tenderly in his arms. And the baby bottle is sort of has the rubber nipple of the baby bottle pointing near his baby son's mouth, Harrison. Okay, so Dexter has this bottle and then the rubber nipple is pointing towards Harrison's, the baby's mouth. So it looks like Dexter is breastfeeding. But it's very well done and it's very beautiful and it shows a lot of love and care for his child. Now, this is about not, not only Dexter's love, but also, it's, it's about this anti-hero, Dexter Morgan, his name is Dexter Morgan, the character. It's about this anti-hero's ability, and it's a display of his need, his need to lovingly nurture his son. And it also shows that he has the ability, not just the need, but the ability to lovingly nurture and feed his son. Okay? Thus, invoking Luter Mansion number 24, which successfully swells the audience of the series. Because the horn that they take, which is represented by the arm of the woman found inside the alligator, the horn that they take and they, from a, a neutered animal, okay? And then on this, they make a rendering of a woman breastfeeding, okay? And they hang it around the neck of someone who's still fertile. Well, Dexter's obviously still fertile. So the arm in the opening scene and the alligator's stomach is that horn. And on that they base the show, and early on, so that follows in with this mansion, they have the scene with him tenderly feeding Harrison in his arms with, with the bottle, point, nipple pointing at his son's mouth so that he looks like he's breastfeeding his son. Okay? So that's how it was done. And it's, it's done very tastefully. And it's, it's a very beautiful scene with a lot of, a lot of heartwarming family feelings. Okay? All right, now. We're moving to November 1st. We have Aquarius waxing half moon happening at 6.36 a.m. or 0636 hours in Lunar Mansion number 25, dwelling in the mid portion of Aquarius 
25 minutes after a waxing crescent moon moves into neuter mansion number 25 at 06 11 hours now protect and guard any crops and orchards you wish to protect from evil or trouble by calling upon the angel of this mansion known by the name aziel to help you safeguard your properties and your produce the lord of this mansion is also called aziel to and this um understand that it can help you to safeguard your your properties as we mentioned and your goods okay so the lord and the angel are both named Aziel in this mansion number 25. So remember that, keep that in mind. Now use a picture icon of a human embedding a plant into soil to cultivate and secure produce surplus, which helps when requesting this from Aziel, either the Lord or the angel. Beware images of armies taking over towns, getting retribution, that kind of military kind of thing where they're, you know, getting vengeance or getting retribution against adversaries or foes or competitors and causing harm to come to them or to break up marriages, to communicate rapidly, to obliterate yields and orchards, to cause impotency, to restrain portions of an organism pro from performing their assigned tasks or their natural tasks, to fortify detainment centers and sturdy structures. Agrippa reveals that for the conservation of trees, orchards and crop yields, Ancient magicians engraved into a wood sculpture the emblem of a man embedding a sapling tree or shrub into the soil and they scented the talisman with the floor of a fig tree and finally hung the charm on one of the trees or plants they did wish to nurture and cultivate. Notice that's similar to the one where for humans it's for breastfeeding and for plants it's, it's, a, it's you know, a, for, to make, it shows a human helping to embed the, the tree and they hang that around the tree. It's similar, see, it's very similar, okay? So again, they, they, uh, what they do is they take that, in that emblem of a man embedding a sapling tree or shrub into the soil and they make it on a, they sculpture it out of wood, like an engraving maybe, yeah? Like a wood, sort of a wood carving and the man is shown burying the shrub, the shrub or the baby tree into the soil, okay? And they give it the scent or the aroma, the aromatics of a fig tree. And then, 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 they, they hang the charm on one of the trees which they did wish to nurture and cultivate. See, it's the same thing. Now, the entire plantation would then become fruitful, okay? This is from a butterfly or a spreading forth, also called lucky star of hidden things in the constellation of Aquarius to water bearer with lunar angel Aziel and Lord of this mansion name is also again Aziel it's Aziel okay now an example of this used in the media is the movie Untraceable which is a 2008 crime thriller movie directed by Gregory Hoblet with screenplay by writers Robert Fivalent and Mark Brinker and Alison Burnett and this uses this movie uses untraceable uses lunar man number 25 in a scene where actress mary beth hurt portrays character stella marsh shown planting trees or shrubs into the soil of the home she shares with her daughter fbi agent jennifer marsh and her granddaughter now actress diane lane depicts the character jennifer marsh in this intriguing and it's very it's a very suspenseful and haunting mystery drama film now, November 2nd, we have an Aquarius waxing gibbous moon to Pisces moon and lunar mansion number 26 at 0404 hours. And it is very good for brotherly love and also uniting of people under one banner, healing for confined persons and creatures, though this mansion obliterates detention centers and other structures. Use a picture or an icon of a woman cleansing and grooming her hair, you know, cleansing and grooming her hair, okay? And it will bring you love and favor if you use that image. From the first drawing or first draining in the constellations of Pegasus the winged horse and Pisces the fish with lunar angel Tagriel and Lord of this mansion name is also Tagriel. Now there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of YouTube channels that, that show women putting on makeup and fixing their hair. 
And if you notice, the channels where women are shown where they mess with their hair, that like they color their hair right in front of you, or they comb their hair right in front of you, or they brush it right in front of you, or they put color in it, but they, sh you, they show you doing it because they're you know, not embarrassed to do that. Their, their channels go real high in number. I've seen that a lot. So it does work, okay? So uh, I'm thinking of doing that. One of these days, like putting some, some, I have some mousse that has red or gold and maybe putting some of my hair on camera and that is, it, it helps with making it, you know, it, like it, it makes you human and, and relatable to people. Okay, November 3rd, we have a Pisces waxing gibbous moon in Lunar Mansion number 27 at 0209 hours, profitable for gaining substantial cash or credit, reaping rewards and healing ailments. Beware the tricksters find opportunity to making mischief during this mansion and will do so if they are given free reign, okay? They will create mischief if you give them free reign to do so. So understand that. This mansion is awful for sailors and it prolongs the confinement of detainees. Structures become fragile during this mansion as well. Beware pictures or figures of an angel or a man sporting wings on his back carrying a, a punctured copper vase that loses its liquid through many small holes running out in thin streams. For this symbol causes the ruination of aquifers and water resources when conjurers inundate the vessel deep into the water resource which they will to devastate. From the second drawing or second draining in the constellations Pegasus the winged horse, Andromeda the princess, and Pisces the fish with lunar angel Alhenio and Lord Ablumel. An example of this used in the media in Hollywood is Crocktails is the episode, a 2004 episode, episode 22, season 11 of Frasier, TV sitcoms, and again it's season 11 and it's episode 22. And it's written by David Angel and Peter Casey and David Lee. Directed by Sheldon Epps, direct, it, it shows, um, I'm sorry, the, um, directed by Sheldon Epps. Now, this show, this episode, it depicts Lunar Mansion number 27 in a scene where actor Kelsey Grammer portraying the character of psychiatrist Dr. Fraser Crane is shown holding an old crock pot that is filled with water which has become so fractured over the years that water is literally pouring out of it in many fine streams as Fraser continues to grasp it in his hand. He's standing at a table where everybody's gathered around and he's put flowers in it and he's going to put it on the table for a decoration, a, a decoration and it's, it's coming out. So he becomes the angel holding this perforated vessel. Now they mention that you inundate, it, you inundate it deep within the area that you want to destroy, where you want to destroy the, the water sources, okay? Now understand that they put this scene where he does this, not at the end of the show, not in the ending scenes, but in the credits. So if you turn it off before you get to the credits, you won't see it. But in the credits when they're singing his song, there were Fraser Kelsey Grammer sings that song about scrambled eggs on his face, that song. It's a great song. Okay. That is where they show it. So that's that's where they bury it deep within. So that you kind of won't see it. Okay? But it's there and it's haunting. You might not think about it. Okay? And I'm not saying it's to necessarily, you know, they're trying to hurt anybody because there's other things that can be done with these mansions and this show is about specifically what I'm going to tell you now why it might have different and more deeper meanings okay deep, more deeper meanings so now here's how it sort of unfolds okay all right so now you understand how Fraser then takes on the image of the angel holding the perforated vessel and thus becomes the angel or the man with wings holding the perforated vessel. Now, the entire episode is about the life of this little crock pot, okay? The little crock pot. And that's over the many years, okay? And like going from year to year and having rememberings over the years in the home of the Crane family. So, Fraser Crane and his father, okay? Now, in fact, one of the early scenes of the episode, Dr. Fraser Crane mentions that the crock is, quote, just an ugly worthless pot, unquote. Just before he answers the doorbell to open his front door to actress Jane Leaves, depicting character Daphne Moon, alluding 
to the view of the female principle and the moon itself held by some orthodox religions that forget that women also have a seed within them to bestow half the DNA necessary to birth a child. Okay? I must admit that this scene did offend me. It did. It did. Being a woman, though it was obviously meant to offend. I understand that. With that said, one must remember the title of author and activist Raj Fatel's book entitled The Value of Nothing to comprehend the deeper meanings of the worth of persons and things which most people find to be worthless. So, again, there's all kinds of deeper meanings in these sorts of things. You can't always assume somebody's trying to hurt somebody. There might be other, other meaningful things, okay, in that. Okay, now, on November 4th, we have Luna moves through two mansions of the moon. Okay. Firstly, on the 4th, a Pisces waxing gibbous moon occurring in lunar mansion number 28 at 0029 hours makes people safe when getting on, ex um, on like planes or trains or automobiles to go on expeditions into perilous locations, beneficial for growing your inventory and reaping your yields. Okay. I think there was a movie by that name. I think Steve Martin was in it. That's a Thanksgiving movie. That's what I thought of it, I think. It's almost Thanksgiving um, next, you know soon okay this coming month now it's very good for people that are married bringing couples happiness it fortifies attention centers beware this mansion can cause you to lose your riches and can also cause military forces to overwhelm villages okay so understand that and you want to protect yourself okay now use a picture of a figurine um or you can use a statue or some kind of a representation, okay, of a big fish swimming in the midst of a group of small fishes to cause your fishing exploits to become more successful. For this rendering causes fishes to gather towards you for whatever type of fish you wish to catch. From the fishes or the belly of the fish, which is the head of Andromeda in the constellation of, oh, we start with Pisces the fish, and Andromeda the princess with lunar angel Amnixiel and Lord Ablamel. Oblomel is also the Lord that will help you in this mansion as in the previous mansion. Secondly, on the fourth, an Aries waxing gibbous moon enters into lunar mansion number one at 2306 hours, favorable for energetic activity. Though take heed that adversaries attempt to intimidate for purposes of inflicting dissension and dislodgement of persons and businesses upon opponents during this mansion. Okay, understand that. Beware pictures or icons depicting a black warrior wielding a weapon according to Agrippa and Warnock's, you know, and Warnock's reference to pick a trick showing a fighting man wearing an outfit of hair that circles around his midsection while his right arm is tossing a piercing weapon, okay? So, again, it's a black warrior wielding a weapon, and this is according to Agrippa and Warnock's references, okay? I'm not just making it up, and they're referencing the the, a book entitled Picatrix showing a fighting man wearing an outfit made of hair that circles around his midsection while with his right arm tossing a piercing weapon. Now understand that when you see people with long, long, long braids down below the waist, that, and it doesn't have to be a man, okay? And they don't have to be tossing a weapon, but it's used. It's used in a lot of things uh, where you see where they lead the way like the pointer person. Uh, it, they'll have a, a dark warrior with a rifle or something. Like there's a show about that uh, I watched called, my husband and I watched called War of the Worlds with Gabriel Byrne, I think is his name, Brian Byrne. Excuse me, I'll look that up, how to say his name correctly. Uh, he was also in Stigmata, okay? He played the priest and also um, another movie, uh, TV show that did that besides the one I'm going to mention to you in a moment. There's another one that did that as well. I think the new uh, Lord of the Rings, not sure what the new Lord of the Rings is called, Rings of Power, Rings of Power, they do that as well with an elf, okay? That's, that's that icon, okay? And you notice that when they do this, populations of certain races are being wiped out, okay? Understand that, that's what this is used for, okay? Take it how you will, but this is what the ancients use it for and that's what its, that's what its meaning is, okay? Now, we're going to talk about Britannia, the, how it's used, in a moment. But this rendering of the Dark Warrior is used to annihilate a specific person or group of people, okay? And if they, some people think they're, they're annihilating a group of people or person, it's bad. But it's like, it depends on whose side you're on. 
because uh, you know another uh, some you know one person's one man's hero is another is another man's villain and vice versa so this is from the horns of Aries in the constellation of Aries around with lunar angel Ginny L and Lord Garrett's the show I'd like to reference for an example of the media using this mansion is Britannia a 2017 action fantasy drama television series uh, with creators Jez Butterworth, Tom Butterworth, and directed, uh, excuse me, excuse me, uh, the, um, the, I'll get to the director in a minute, but the, the writers, no, I'm sorry, these are the creators, I'm sorry, these are the creators, Jez Butterworth, Tom Butterworth, and James Richardson, they're the creators, that's a little, that's the, like, who came up with the concepts and all that. And it utilizes mansion number one in season one, episode one, one. And this episode, in this season, is written by Terry Kafola and directed by Metin Hussein. Okay, and it depicts two different black Roman soldiers, and one wielding a sword and the other a club for the purpose of dislodging, enslaving, and conquering various populations of Britannia. In a very early scene of this episode, actor David Morrissey portrays Roman general Aulus. Uh, and his last name is uh, Plautius, 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 Aulus Plautius, and orders an ethnically black African soldier, an African Roman soldier, going by the name of Antonius, to execute other Roman soldiers that look to be of southern Italian ethnicity because he is disciplining the group for wrongdoing. And he asks all of them, you know, said, will you, you know, turn on your brothers and then, you know, you'll be the one that I let go you know, and you won't be killed. And they all say, okay, I'll kill everybody and, and then I'll be, your, I'll be your champion, you know, let, you know, let me live and I'll do it. And so all the Italians saying that, all the Southern Italians saying that to the, to the Roman general, okay, Aldius um, Plau, uh, Plautius. And, but the black one, the one that's a black African Roman soldier, he says, I don't care. I don't care what you do, I just don't care. So the general chooses him because he felt he liked his attitude better. Of course, this is written in, and these people are chosen by their race, so that doesn't make the Southern Italians look very good, and people get bad opinions of them, and that might, might not be true. They, you know, they might be just as uh, uncaring, or they might be, or they might be brave. It's, it's, it's kind of, you know. I mean, I went through life with Rosemary as my name, and Rosemary's baby caused a lot of people to hate me. So I'm just saying, it has an effect, okay? So I'm just saying. All right, so with that said, okay, the actor that, uh, the actor that portrayed the, Rome, the black African Roman soldier, his name is Aaron Pierre. And of course, it's not the actor's fault, they're just casting the parts. And the Roman soldier, um, it, this, he's a very prominent when the Romans attack, terrorize, and enslave the families um, of one of the villages of Britannia. So the actor, uh, Aaron Pierre, he's the one that plays the one that wields the sword and said, I don't care. I think it's Antonius, I mentioned it earlier, Antonius. Not the one with the club with the, with the engravings on his face, the scarification, not that one. The one with the sword that gets sort of captured by the Druids. Okay, so anyway, he's very prominent when the Romans attacked, terrorized, and enslaved the families of one of the villages of Britannia. So wiping out a population of white people. And, and the, the general looks like to be a Norse person, not an Italian. Or if he was Italian, he would be thought to be northern Italian. He would certainly thought, be thought to be probably of Viking extraction. Okay? So I'm just saying it's sort of, Italians get hurt a lot in movies. Southern looking Italians that aren't as tall and have sort of light brown skin get hurt a lot in movies and victimized a lot in movies and made to look like they're bad people. And I'm three quarters Italian, but I'm, I'm one quarter, my father said Welsh, my mother said Scotch, <laughs> but anyway, uh, and, you know, so it, I don't know if I look Italian or, or more Welsh or whatever, but it's just, it doesn't seem to be good when you, you know, show one group of people being constantly denigrated. It's not good, because it's not fair, to be honest with you. Now, November 5th. We have Aries waxing gibbous moon in lunar mansion number two. And this is going to happen at 2203 hours. It's advantageous for locating and retrieving jewelry. 
and other expensive riches as well as making audacious moves to better yourself or those in your charge. Also beneficial for securing detainees, beware that rivals wanting to cause rebellion in your ranks often attempt to exploit such opportunities during this mansion. Now utilize a picture or an emblem of a king sporting a crown atop his head for during this mansion such a rendering causes reunion and good understanding with the crown prince. From the belly of Aries and the constellation of Aries the Ram with Lunar Angel and Eddie Allen Lord and Adil. The movie Untraceable, a 2008 movie uh, that we mentioned earlier, okay? I, I already gave you the details of that movie, but I'm going to show you how they use this um, mansion in that movie as well. Because what they do in movies is they take, they take a, a section of Lunar Mansions and they make a movie out of it and they go, you know, kind of, you, you usually right down in a row, you know. Sometimes there may be a little bit of just before the other one, but basically they take a chunk and they just do a, they just, you know, like a series, right, you know, a chunk of, of these and then they, they base it on, I don't know, maybe four or five, six Lunar Mansions or something like that. And commercials usually use one, TV series may use one or a few more, maybe one, two or three, okay. So that's how it's done and YouTube, People use it. Sometimes they act it out. Sometimes they mention words that bring up the concept. But like when they talk about, the, well, we'll talk about that when we get to that one a different time. But anyway, I'll continue with this one. But that's how it's used in general. The lunar mansions are used. So, how to cut to the chase? How lunar mansion number two was used in Untraceable? Okay, that we already mentioned with Diane Lane. Okay, as as the FBI agent. Okay. She was the actress, played the FBI agent. Okay, here, so here's how, we, how this one was used. Okay, Lunar Mansion number two was used in a scene where actress Perla Haney Jardine portrays character Annie Haskins, shown wearing a tiara-like crown upon her head at, at her birthday party where her mother, FBI agent Jennifer Marsh, and her grandmother are attending and doing for her in honor of her birthday. Okay, so she's at a birthday party for her. Her mother's an FBI agent and her and her grandmother, okay, are there, okay? So they're all at this party. In fact, Annie is the only character at the birthday party wearing a crown. She's the only one wearing a crown or tiara. Actress Diane Lane depicts the character Jennifer Marsh in this captivating film. It's a great film. The second Lunar Mansion element of securing detainees is one portion of the script that is addressed in the birthday party scene in that this movie storyline introduces the audience to the dark side of the internet through the FBI hunt for a serial killer that is live streaming his crimes on the web, okay? And character Annie Haskins' birthday party is interrupted when her mother, FBI agent Jennifer Marsh, has to leave the party with her colleague because another killing has been, at that moment, it's being live streamed in the movie. And so she, actually it's not, it's not something that already happened, it's something that's at the moment, she has to leave. It's being live streamed as it's happening. Okay, okay. So that's how Lunar Mansion Number Two is used in the movie. Where earlier it was, it was, it was an earlier mansion, Number Twenty Five. And so, even though it seems like two is before Twenty Five, just like this week, Twenty Five is before Lunar Mansion Number Two because it only goes to Twenty Eight and it starts all over again. This week, it's just like that movie. It starts off with Twenty Five and. And in the you know more towards the middle and it's, two, it's number two see and then and then at the end of this week is number three okay so that's it's j the that they, that's they just take it just like a week we'll take a chunk of these little mansions the movies do the exact same thing and you know it, you can you know like different chunks that are taken can like give people ideas for movies and make the movies real real intriguing for people because because the lunar mansions are brought up okay they're brought up and and during these during these weeks, they'll, they'll talk about it on commercials, the news will mention things, okay? So, if you're in the groove, if you're in that sort of stream, if you're, if you're in that groove, you kind of become part of a, a, a wonderful, it, it feels like, you feel like you're part of something bigger than yourself, but you feel like you really are a part of it. You don't feel like you're a little cog in a big machine like you feel most of the time. When you do it with the Lunar Mansions and it's more psychically, because it helps you psychically. You don't feel like you're a little tiny cog in a big machine. You feel like you're, you're part of a hologram. Psychically connected, psychically connected with a hologram with everybody else. You really feel a part, like you're part of something in a really good way, in a calming way. 
So it's really great to use the Lunar Mansions in some way in your life. Now, November 6th, we have an Aries Waxing Gibbous Moon to Taurus Moon in Lunar Mansion number 3. At 21, 22 hours, profitable for enchanters, like myself, chemists, pharmacists, and sailors, and sportsmen, hunters, trappers, and poachers. Now, use depictions or symbols of a richly dressed lady reclining in a valuable chair, resting her, her, her right arm, okay? Dressing her, her right arm casually over and above her head. For this representation causes anyone viewing it to become joyful, wealthy, and acquiring all that one desires from the rainy ones or those that reign or the Pleiades in the constellation of Taurus the Bull with lunar angel Amixiel and Lord Anusia. The movie that used this, a representation of this, where you see someone doing this, it, it brings on wealth and well-being, The Adams Family, a 1991 dark comedy fantasy movie written by Charles Adams, Carolyn Thompson with Larry Wilson, directed by Barry Sonnefeld. Sonnefeld. Charles Adams is renowned for being the original creator of the characters in The Adams Family, beginning in 1938 with comics. That's how it started. That's how, that's how he started it, Charles Adams, okay? Then moving into television shows, if you remember that, I certainly do, and on to movies. In this spectacular 1991 movie, Lunar Mansion number three is used in the early scene of the film showing actress Angelica Houston portraying the character Morticia Adams lying in her bed with her arm lifted up over her head as was, uh, as is, still is, traditional, the traditional representation for this mansion. Actor Raul Julia Raul, let me say that right. Actor Raul Julia, depicting Morticia's husband, character Gomez Adams, comes into the room and he uses a sword to gallantly close the blinds to stop the sun from streaming in and disturbing both Morticia and her plant. It is one of the, it's at the bedside, you know, on the table on the bedside, her plant is going like this. It's going, oh, like it's, it's wilting, you know, and it's going, oh, it's kind of closing its eyes. And then when it takes the sun away, it, it brightens right up. And so does Morticia, you know? Okay. So both Morticia and her plant are extremely sensitive to sunlight. Okay. They're both extremely sensitive to sunlight. Now, in this scene, it becomes evident that both the affluence and the joy provided by this mansion of the moon number three are an intricate portion of this lovingly and wonderfully eccentric family. Okay. Some important books that I want you to get if you're interested in Lunar Mansions, Lunar Mansion Magic, for whatever purpose you want to use it for. We have the first book, Picatrix, and the writing is attributed to Maslama al Madriti, and that's more of an ancient book, and now a medieval book, it is Three Books of Occult Philosophy, and that's written by Henry Cornelius Agrippa, and Llewellyn has, a, has one uh, publication of that. Okay, I have that one. And they pick it up for Picatrix. I use the PDF online. And also we have, we have the Mansions of the Moon, a lunar zodiac for astrology and magic. And, that's, and, and that has a ephemeris to, to 2033. And this is written by Christopher Warnock and it's published by Renaissance Astrology. I have that one, I use it every day. Okay, there's another book you gotta get to for the star magic portions that I do in my Wishing Upon a Star. So go check our Wishing Upon a Star videos okay and I'm writing a blog right now to really consolidate that wishing upon a star to wish upon a star for real and make your dream come true because it's star magic okay not just any star in the constellation but specific stars okay and a book that that's good to help you understand is that I use and I use the PDF for that it's called um, the fixed stars and constellations in astrology by Vivian E. Robson Vivian Irwin Robson or Vivian E. Robson. The Fixed Signs and Constellations in Astrology. Or Fixed Stars and Constellations in Astrology. So when I get back to my wishing on a star magic, star magic, I'll be having that more in, embedded firmly in my memory again. So thank you for joining us. And join us again next time. Joyful light, perfect rises Medusa's head. She
showing secrets of witchcraft Her fate rises, Medusa's head Showing secrets of witchcraft Come the day of the dead Come the day of the dead Come the day of the dead Beneath the sea there shines a light Dwelling of sea Day of the dead. 